Hi everyone, thanks for being here. My name is Simon Fagel Souberan, and this is Decoding Real World Visual Recognition Abilities in the Human Brain. So, we're starting to observe quite large individual differences in human visual and brain representations. Here, we will focus on variations in face recognition ability, which is an important and ecological capacity our visual system uses in our everyday life. So, take this face for example. Let's call this man George. Some of you may remember George's face years from now, while some of you may not even remember it at the end of this talk or even at the end of the next slides. Here we ask what brain process enables such variations. And face recognition ability might be affected by a wide range of processes. Most obviously could be affected by visual processes, so early, mid and late brain process. But it might also be affected by brain processes beyond what is generally considered as visual. It could be that higher level semantic processes also impact face recognition ability. Indeed, it's likely that semantic representations of an object or face is affected by the earlier visual process. It's also likely that good face recognizers rely on far richer representations than the rest of us, both visually and conceptually. So this project had two goals. The first was to attempt to predict using MVPA, or multivariate pattern analysis, an individual's ability based on his EG traces. <coughs> The second was to probe the brain computations beyond variations in face recognition ability. To achieve these two goals, here we will look at individuals with outstanding face recognition abilities called super recognizers. More specifically, we recruited 16 super recognizers defined as individuals within the top 2% of face recognition ability in the population. Every SR or super recognizer had more than 92 on the CFMT plus which is a gold standard test in face recognition ability. We also recruited individuals within the typical range of abilities that we here call typical recognizers. We made sure that our sample was representative of the population by comparing it with three independent data sets of face ability scores, and we found that indeed it was. On the slide here, you see the CFMT plus scores of our participants with those of 332 participants. Half of our super organizer had been identified previously by Maike Ramon in Switzerland and Germany, while the other half of, had been previously identified by Josh Davis from the United Kingdom. This was really unfortunate for, for me, as you can imagine, as I then had to travel all across Europe to collect this data set. So we recorded a large identity EEG data set. The brain activity of our participants was recorded while we completed a simple one-back task where we presented a flow of different images. These images included various categories, such as face of different identities, facial expressions, and also non-face objects, such as animal, inanimate objects, and scene. In total, we recorded over 100,000 trials of identity EG data, with more than 3,000 trials per participant. We needed that much EG data because we wanted to predict an individual's face recognition ability, either it was from typical or super recognizer group, from a single trial of EG activity. We use multivariate pattern analysis or decoding models that we train to classify EG trial as super, here in yellow, or typical, here in gray. So in this space here of the linear discriminant, our model, each dot represents a single trial EG topographic pattern at a specific moment, so 128 electrodes. We repeated this process for every point in time and computed the accuracy for each model, which gave us time-resolved evidence for group membership to the super or typical organizer group. In other words, this revealed any brain processing differences between individuals differing in their visual abilities. So here we show the time course of this typical versus super recognizer decoding evidence. The first tracking result here is that the decoding approach, approach were quite well with EG. In fact, uh, here, looking at this evidence in time, we see a flat baseline at chance at 50%, and then around 70 milliseconds, accuracy rises and extends very well after a stimulus offset, which ended at 600 milliseconds, until around 900 milliseconds. So second, interestingly, we found that super recognizer participants can also be accurately decoded when they process non-face stimuli. The two curves here, blue for face and gray for non-faces, are remarkably similar, which indicates that the brain of super recognizers process not only faces, but also non-face stimuli differently. Thirdly, our searchlight analysis showed occipital temporal search sources, but also extending to parietal and even some frontal electrode here in the face condition. 
So using occipital temporal electrodes in the right hemisphere, we can determine with up to 77% accuracy whether or not you are a super recognizer from a single trial EEG trace. So with this, we can determine accurately if a participant is a super recognizer or not from EEG. But we haven't shown it that we can predict the continuous individual ability scores from EEG. So we extended our findings using a regression approach where we decoded individual CFMT scores directly using cross-validated fractional rate regression. Here we show the correlation between the predicted CFMT scores and the real, the measured CFMT scores of our participant at each given time point. Essentially, we replicate our results. We obtain high accuracy for decoders and time windows from around 90 milliseconds to around 800 milliseconds after onset. So looking at the temporal characteristic of these results suggested that different brain processing stages support face recognition ability. So early, mid, and late visual processes, but also perhaps even semantic process. Indeed, we found evidence very late, lasting until around 900 milliseconds after onset. So we knew when brain processing was different, but not exactly how it differed in individuals with the, uh, differing in their visual abilities. <clears throat> so we decided to go a step further and characterize these brain, processing, brain processes by comparing them to computational models. To do so, we used two computational models, so a convolutional neural net, a CNN, AlexNet, which has been associated with different stages of visual processing in the brain, and a semantic model based on sentence de descriptions of our stimuli. Specifically here, we ask five new participants to write description of our stimuli online on Meadows. Then we fed these sentences to a semantic encoder that gave us sentence embedding, so point on a semantic space. We used RSA, representational similarity analysis, to bridge representations in the brain and these two models. For human brain data, for example, we computed distance between brain representations, so EG pattern at a given point in time, of different pairs of stimuli, for example here, a face and a scene. By repeating this process for all pairs of stimuli, we obtain a representational dissimilarity matrix, or RDM, which can be seen as a sort of a snapshot of how a brain encodes different types of stimuli. Similarly, we created RDMs for each layer of AlexNet, so from layer 1 to layer 8, using layer activations, and for the semantic uh, model, using sentence embeddings. To compare these representations, we use mutual information, which gave us a robust estimate of the shared information between two RDMs. One, for example, extracted from AG activity at a given time, and another extracted from the first layer, for example, of the CNN. We repeated this process for uh, between the EG and the semantic model. Here, on the y-axis, we show the mutual information between EG RDMs, and RDMs from the middle layers of the CNN for both groups, super recognizer, SR, and typical recognizer. <clears throat> we found that representation in the brain of super recognizer resemble more those in the middle layers of the CNN compared to typical recognizer. This effect peak in layer four of AlexNet, shown here, but uh, was also found for layer three, five, and six, but not for layers before that, and not for layers after that. These layers have been associated with processing in IT and with the processing of mid-level features in the brain. Temporally, these effects were found between 130 and 165 milliseconds, matching with the N170 time window, which is critical to phase processing. Note also that we found similar results with another CNN, VGD16, which is not shown here. <clears throat> we also found a significant effect for the similarity to the semantic model, with brain representation of super recognizer being more similar to those of the semantic mode models compared to the typical recognizer. Here, in contrast, the effect was found much later, around 650 milliseconds. The time scale matches with that of the P600 ERP component, which has been associated with language and syntax processing. So we believe that these results are rather exciting because they show that two qualitatively different processes dissociated both in time and in types of computations are linked to higher face recognition ability. So to sum up, we found that exceptional face recognition ability is associated to changes in brain dynamics widely as early as 70 milliseconds and as late as 900 milliseconds after stimulus onset. We also found that exceptional face recognition ability impacts brain representation not only for faces, but also for non-face categories. This suggests that super recognizers have brains that better process visual information in general, 
or in other words, that they have domain general enhancements of brain representations. Finally, we found that robust, we found robust similarity between AG and our computational models. And doing so, we uncovered two computational, uh, two components of higher ability. A mid-level visual component associated with mid layers of a CNN and found within the N170 window. And this suggests that feature-like representations, such as at the eyes of a face or depending on object curvatures, is, is an enhanced in superconizers. The second component we found was associated to higher similarity to the semantic model and found late within the P600 window. This is also an interesting finding because it underlines that semantic processes are linked to real-world imported changes in visual behavior. To conclude, we found that EG surprisingly informative of realistic, behaviorally relevant variations in brain processing across individuals. And an interesting finding here was also that face recognition ability impacts more than what we consider purely visual process, extending to semantic spaces. So picture this face again. <clears throat> How well we remember it and how well we remember faces of individuals around us is linked to rich visual and to conceptual level information our brain carries between different faces, objects and seeds stored in our memory. On top of the visual information I gave you about George, show the picture here, it's likely that if I had given you his job or his favorite hobby, you would have remembered him more. So with this, I thank you for being here, and I thank my supervisors, Frédéric Gosselin and Yann Charest, and my collaborators, especially Michael Ramon, who uh, welcome in Fribourg-Lassion. So thank you.